This is meeting to order on Tuesday, January 21st, 2014. I want to welcome everyone. We are um, very glad to have with us tonight Pastor George Ganey of the Smyrna Presbyterian Church. He's going to come forward at this time and give our invocation and also lead us in the place of the flag. So would everyone please rise. Let us pray. Most gracious and loving Heavenly Father, Son and Holy Spirit, we thank you and praise your holy name that you have provided for us this country and state and the beautiful city of Smyrna in which to live and prosper. We thank you for the freedoms that we enjoy and for the blessings we receive daily. We especially lift up to you, O Lord, and ask your blessing upon this city, Mayor Bacon, and this city council. We pray that you would be pleased tonight to direct and to prosper all their deliberations and decisions to the good of your glory and for the good of your people. We pray that everything they do tonight will be so well ordered so as to advance the welfare, the safety, and the honor of the people. Help them tonight to do the right things. Dear Lord, we also pray for the safety and well-being of our police department our fire department, the public works, and all those in our city who serve and labor on our behalf and for our good. Bless them and protect them, we pray. Again, O oh Lord, bless this meeting and all those present here. May everything said and done be pleasing in your sight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And for those folks that um, are looking for a church or maybe want to make a change or just uh, they're at 3130 Atlanta Road. On the right, going out of town. I'm sure George would love to have you. Uh, agenda changes. We actually have um, item 4A, um, which is the zoning request uh, for the construction of a new McDonald's uh, at the Kroger location. That will be tabled until February the 3rd. Is that correct? 17th of February. Okay. When we get down to it. I think those are the only changes that we have. Uh, item three is the uh, the mayor's report. We've got a resolution, approval of resolution 2014-01 of the city of Smyrna in support of the Chattahoochee Now. Mr. Fennell has that. Mr. Fennell. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I have a resolution for council's consideration. It is a resolution of the city of Smyrna in support of Chattahoochee Now. Whereas the citizens of the city of Smyrna value natural resources and recreation and community development opportunities afforded by the Chattahoochee River, and whereas the citizens of the city of Smyrna value the Chattahoochee River for water quality and habitat protection, and whereas the citizens of the city of Smyrna will greatly benefit from the social, recreational, and natural experiences provided by a revitalized and connected river corridor, Whereas the city of Smyrna encourages and supports efforts to enhance economic development along the river corridor and its adjacent neighborhoods. And whereas the mission of Chattahoochee now is to facilitate and promote the transformation of the Chattahoochee River into a dynamic corridor that advances the health, quality, and life and economic vitality of our region. Whereas the principles of Chattahoochee Now are for the Chattahoochee River Corridor to offer the citizens of the city of Smyrna and the region improved quality of life amenities through a balance of preservation, recreation, and community development initiatives that offer economic, social, and environmental benefits. Whereas the objectives of Chattahoochee Now will increase the appreciation for the Chattahoochee River's resources and provide a lasting benefit to the citizens of the city of Smyrna and our region. Now, therefore, be it hereby resolved that the mayor and council of the city of Smyrna affirms and supports the mission of Chattahoochee now for its value and benefit to the citizens, its neighboring cities and counties, and be it further resolved that the mayor and council of the city of Smyrna hereby direct each department of the city to work together and separately to achieve the mission under Chattahoochee now. 
Uh, as many of you know, this uh, Chattahoochee River segment that was annexed as a result of our uh, adding of 82 acres along the river puts uh, Smyrna uh, well within the conversation about uh, this uh, subject, and I urge passage of this resolution. Are you making an informal motion? Uh, okay. Made a motion. We got a motion by Mr. Fennell. Second by Mr. Welch. Is there any discussion? All those in favor of the motion, please vote. That's approved 7 0. Thank you very much. Uh, item 4 is land issues, zonings, and annexation. Uh, item A 2014 003 is a public hearing. Uh, this is the zoning request, zoning amendment to the modify to modify the currently approved zoning condition Z11-009 for the construction of a McDonald's restaurant, 1.07 acre track land lot 380, 3240 South Cobb Drive, Integrity Engineering and Development Services Inc. As I mentioned at the beginning of the meeting, this this will be tabled. Is there anyone here that came just for that issue? Um, since this, since it was advertised as a, as a public hearing, I'm gonna, if, if you want to come and be sworn in, and unless you want to come back on the 17th, um, I don't know if I'll be able to. So. Okay, well you can. Yeah. Okay, you can make your comments then. I'll let you do that, and just tell us who you are and where you live. My name is Brian Bober. I live at 4893 Delford Court, and um, I'm here just to request that, uh, as it currently stands, and if there's no changes to it, that the McDonald's um, de development at the uh, at the Kroger location be denied. Um, there's already a McDonald's right on the other side of the corner. Um, I can't imagine they're going to just move across Concord Road and have both locations, so I'm concerned that they're going to leave a blighted uh, McDonald's at the old location. Um, the other thing is uh, I looked over the recommendation from community development and I do have the same concerns about parking. I also don't think it's an originally intended use for that location. I know that the zoning had been changed in the past from the original concept of office buildings and other things flanking South Cobb Drive, but I think it could bring the bad, the same kind of negative appearance that we're trying to fix in the city if we have a lot of these um, small developments built along the edge of the mall. I don't think it's the right use for the area. I think Mr. Wells can maybe address some of those concerns. If you... I, I, I want to call him Ken Sudruth if he's if he's out there to ask one one question. Uh, Mr. Sudruth, I want to get into to everything, every comment here, but 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 I believe one of the, his comments was uh, regarding the existing McDonald's. It was my understanding that that it, uh, under the current plan, that McDonald's is to be demolished. Is that correct that's about excuse me that is my understanding Mr. Okay. Welch. and I think we're, we're we're looking into the other other issues that uh, that he was discussing so, um, but the, the one issue there is um, was the demolition of that other McDonald's it, right it just just for the record the franchise owner of that McDonald's would move up to the Kroger site so it would be the same owner just in a different location okay. thank you hope that answers some of your questions uh, Mr. Welch. Uh, Mr. Mayor, at this time, um, I'd like to make a motion that we table until February 17th at the McDonald's Corporation request, uh, zoning request number Z14-001, zoning amendment to modify the current approved zoning conditions, uh, Z009 for the construction of McDonald's restaurant, 1.07 acre tract, landlock 380, 3240 South Cobb Drive. Uh, by Integrity Engineering and Development Services Incorporated. That's table to the 17th. Motion second to table. All those in favor of the motion, please vote. That's to approve 7 0 to table to February the 17th. Item B under land issues, zonings, and annexation 2014 004. It's a public hearing, zoning request Z 13 019. Rezoning from R15 to RAD conditional for the development of two single family homes on 0 0.365 acre track landlot 451, 1041 McClendon Avenue, 
the McClendon Group LLC. Mr. Taylor, the background, please. Uh, Mr. Mayor, um, if you don't mind, I'm also going to have the background cover item C since the two items are, are together. Um, the, uh, the McClendon Group uh, LLC is seeking approval of rezoning to accommodate two single family residences at 1041 McClendon Avenue. Um, their applicant is proposing the renovation of the existing home and the development of a new detached single family residence. And the density for the site will be 5.5 units per acre. Um, if this was to move forward, a land use change from moderate density residential to, to medium density residential will be required for this rezoning, which would be item C on this agenda. Um, this particular rezoning request uh, was heard by the Planning and Zoning Board at December 9th, 2013 meeting and was passed by a vote of 7 to 0. However, uh, community development staff does have some concerns about this development and does recommend denial. Uh, I know the, ap <clears throat> the applicant is here. Uh, this is a public hearing. Is there anyone here that's in opposition to or like to make any public comment or support for this for this issue? Okay, uh, anyone that wants to that needs to be sworn in, you please step forward. And even if you just think you want to be sworn in, I want to swear everybody in one time. That's uh, anybody. That's Sean, Sean, you need to be sworn in. You're not going to speak? Yeah, just in case you want to speak. Just in case you want to speak. You don't have to speak, but I don't want to. There's another, yeah, we got there you go. Here's another one. Do them. This is in Mr. Corky Welch's ward. Mr. Welch, uh, if, if you just have a seat, we're going to, uh, and then we'll call you when we, uh, after the after the presentation. Thank you. I'm, I'm going to call on Mr. Ken Sudrath again to, to come up and give us a little bit of information about this, uh, the background on this site and a little bit about the history of it. Mr. Taylor has outlined uh, the difference with, uh, in the recommendation between staff and the Planning Commission. Planning Commission did uh, recommend approval of this request. Staff had recommended denial. Um, those differences are outlined in the in the packet of information that that you've been given, but I will go through these um, in the presentation. Um, the existing condition on the property is one single family resident. What is being proposed is to renovate the existing resident uh, residence and then uh, sp subdivide the lot because it is a what we classify as a double frontage lot. Um, and then create a new single family um, resident on the newly created lot that would <clears throat> be facing the other street. To do that, you have to change the zoning because you've got lot issues uh, and lot width uh, and density related issues. So the proposed zoning uh, is RAD conditional uh, from the existing zoning of R15. As already stated, because of that change and the density issues, uh, we would also, if it moves forward and it's listed on the agenda as well, there would have to be a um, land use uh, adjustment as well from moderate density to medium uh, density for that lot. On the map, up on the screen on the left side of, the, uh, of that slide is the zoning map uh, showing you the subject property. Uh, showing you that uh, it is a double frontage lot that runs between uh, McClendon and Medlin. The existing house actually faces uh, McClendon, so the new lot uh, uh, that would be created in the proposed house would be facing Medlin. You also see the future development uh, map that is there. Might be a little bit hard uh, to see actually on the screen, but there's actually three different uh, density colors there uh, in the upper left is uh, more of a green shaded uh, area which is the um, lower of the densities that are in the area uh, then you've got the subject property in the area around it um, as um, the moderate density and then you have an apartment density uh, that's outlined in the in the dark brown that's down the street this map was uh, put together to show you the relationship um, that the subject property uh, really has to the bigger picture of, of Concord Road, uh, as well as several other rezonings that have been um, 
either discussed verbally or in writing in some form with you. Um, back in 06, there was a rezoning of that um, apartment complex uh, from RM12 to RHR conditional. That did not require land use change uh, given what it was already, uh, what the land use was. That request was approved because there was a redevelopment opportunity to convert apartments to, to stacked condominium flats. The economy, however, uh, took a downturn before all that happened. This lot was handled in 07. Uh, again, they changed from R15 to RAD. Uh, again, no lane use change. Um, it was moderate density, uh, which allowed up to uh, the 4.38 units per acre. Um, and it originally was one lot of record. And the variance associated that had to do with lot sizes as well as setbacks. This lot was handled um, in 06, uh, a change again to RAD conditional. A land use change um, from moderate density to medium density uh, did take place. Uh, it was originally eight lots of record. Uh, it was approved because of, it was uh, an entire redevelopment of a block. Uh, and it was contiguous to a medium density a land use and the variance associated with that built into that zoning had to do with lot size and setbacks as well. Then we had a change uh, in 2012, again, to the RAD conditional, uh, no land use change associated with that. It was a redevelopment for two homes, uh, of two homes to four homes. Part of the rationale is the, is the lots in those areas were originally platted as four lots back in the 50s, um, as well as it was a down zoning from, the, uh, from a proposed commercial parking lot. Um, which was to serve businesses that were on Concord Road at the time. Y'all were sent this map as well. Uh, all of the individual lot sizes have been uh, placed on these lots. Um, staff uh, tries to, on these kind of situations, center the lot and then everything around it we will um, tell you about. The sample set had 71 lots in it. The lots ranged from a uh, little over 8,300 square feet to just over 20,000 square feet with the uh, average uh, and median lot size almost being the same, but both over 12,000 square feet. Now this is the proposed site plan. Um, you can see that there are two um, residences proposed. Um, the existing resident is to be um, enlarged, uh, renovated and enlarged facing uh, McClendon and then a new resident on Medlin. These are the proposed elevations uh, on the Medlin Street side for the home. And then um, the McClendon Avenue elevation, again, they are taking, a, uh, keeping an existing house and just um, upgrading it. Pictures of the subject property and the adjacent area. As I said, staff had recommended uh, denial of this proposal um, due to the density aspects um, of the project. It, it seeds uh, what is allowed in the area. Uh, second, the subject property is not contigu contiguous to any property. Uh, within that medium density land use classification. Um, we also are concerned about uh, setting a, um, a precedent uh, for uh, an another uh, request and this just continuing. There's a fine line between continuing to encourage redevelopment of the area as well as uh, versus setting, uh, splitting lots down that are, um, may not be suitable. Planning Commission uh, heard this request uh, at the December meeting. Um, they understood uh, staff's concerns and comments, but actually felt that the uh, redevelopment of the area um, outweighed 
those other concerns, and they approved it with a 6-0 vote. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions uh, regarding both of those recommendations, if you wish. Ken, what's the square footage of each lot uh, proposed, approximately? Um, I, I want to say that it, it's somewhere at, it, around 8,000 square feet for each lot. I mean, I think one of them was, was below eight. Um, allow me to put my glasses on. The Medlin Street lot was 8164, uh, Corky, and the uh, McClendon lot is 7732. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you for that presentation. Um, Sean, I, I think uh, I understood that you had a little presentation that you wanted to give in this as well. But before Ken, are there any questions of Ken? Right. Thank you, Ken. Tell them just for the record, if you'll tell us who you are and who else is coming up there. And this is forward there. And that's back. Okay. Good afternoon or good evening, uh, Mayor and Council. My name is Sean Murphy. I reside at 982 McClendon Avenue, which for the record is just a block from this application. Uh, one of my partners here, Martha McNeish. Hello. <laughs> So I have a brief presentation. Uh, normally wouldn't do this, but since staff did recommend denial, I thought I'd take a chance to, I mean, uh, take this uh, opportunity to go through uh, why we think this is the right thing for our neighborhood. So Smyrna Heights Neighbors is an area that's defined uh, by the red blob there in the middle of the screen. Uh, it's generally a, a community within Smyrna represented mostly by 1950s uh, bungalow type homes, two and three bedroom, one bath houses. Uh, many of these are now underperforming, uh, if you know what I mean. Essentially, uh, they don't meet the, the needs and the desires of current home buyers, and it's uh, largely rentals. Uh, our particular project is proposed in what we call Smyrna Heights North, which is uh, a neighborhood in transition. Uh, this is an area just north of Concord Road and uh, basically geographically described as the area between Medlin Street, Concord, uh, Love Street, um, and I guess you'd look at the apartments there on the far west side as the uh, western boundary. One thing that you'll notice right here, this uh, I wanted to make it clear what we're talking about in our neighborhood. Um, our neighborhood, despite the fact that it is a uh, single-family residential neighborhood, is a rental neighborhood, more than 50 percent. Uh, the red indicated on the screen here are the known rentals in the neighborhood. Um, the purple are the townhomes. Uh, the green lots are the ones the city now basically owns, which are becoming green space. And then the yellow are the known single-family residences. Um, we face uh, a condition including apartments on either side of our neighborhood, including Section 8. Mitchell's Park is on the uh, eastern side of the neighborhood. And we're also experiencing considerable growth and change. We've got uh, brand new developments at the entrance to our neighborhood at Dunton, uh, including the uh, Laurel Commons project, uh, the townhomes that just got built there at Medlin Place, and uh, the brand new project that just, just was approved and has been broken ground in the last couple of weeks, uh, also on Medlin. Uh, this is one of the recent new homes built uh, on, on McClendon Street, just at the other end, a block down from where we're requesting. This is a shopping center that, uh, as you all know, failed in the city, ended up purchasing this property at Dunton. We've got the brand new townhomes, and we've got the big steel structure. So we, we've got a lot around us is the point of all that. It, it's not a homogenous neighborhood with a bunch of houses that look the same. Um, we've got a lot of pressure on us for change. So the site of the proposed improvement is right here on this plan. 
Now, I do want to point this out for the record. Uh, my partners and I own the site, uh, but I personally own the site that just showed up there in blue. Going back again, that's the site we're talking about tonight. I personally own this site, which is, is currently a rental property. This site here is uh, residence, uh, Mr. Frank Pellegrino, who's here tonight, who will speak briefly. Um, and his, uh, if you look at, let me go back again. The size of that lot is very similar to what we're going to be requesting. Then you've got the apartments, which uh, you heard Mr. Sutter speak of a minute ago, that have been approved for residential high-rise, which are less than 50 yards away from this uh, site. And then here are the other lots that are basically almost identical to what we're requesting, right on the same street, just one house over. And then here are the uh, RAD uh, lots that have been recently approved that have lot sizes significantly smaller or the same as what we're looking to do. Here's the zoning map. Uh, you might be able to read this one a little better than the other one, but uh, you can see there's a large area of yellow, uh, which our lot falls in. It's all R15, uh, but then we do have the residential high-rise uh, as well as some RAD and uh, other zonings around us. One thing I want to point out that I think is very important is we've been talking a lot about uh, in, in staff's recommended denial about the moderate density and medium density. Uh, I take a little bit of issue with that because, frankly, in our neighborhood, which is zoned R15, very few of the houses conform with R15 zoning. These are the R15 requirements, 15,000 square feet, 2,000 square feet of floor area, the setbacks, 85 foot wide uh, lot, and so forth. This map shows the actual lots in Smyrna Heights North confirm, conform with R15. You notice it's about eight lots. This map gives a real picture. Um, going to the dark green lots of those same eight lots again this time, the uh, medium green are, are the ones that would conform with R12. The light green are 12,000 square feet but aren't, don't meet the width requirement. And the red are less than 12,000. So what that means is that everything that's in light green or red essentially would have to be RAD under current zoning. Only eight lots in Smyrna Heights North conform to R15 zoning requirements, and even those lots that do not have 2,000 square feet of living space. Uh, approximately 20 lots in Smyrna Heights North are compatible with R12 zoning based on the lot size, width, and heated floor area. Most lots are 75 and 85, foot, 85 feet in width by 150 feet in depth, putting them right in the absolute minimum lot size for R12 or just under. Over 50 percent of the neighborhood is non-compatible with R15 or R12 zoning based on lot sizes that exist today. A new zoning category is appropriate for smaller lots of 6,000 to 12,000 square feet in Smyrna that are becoming prevalent as the density and demand for new urbanism increases. These are the precedents that I believe have already been set. We have Mitchell Park, Medlin Place, Medlin Park, the Pellegrino residence, and Ford residence as the examples I've chosen. Um, starting with Mitchell Park, um, it was proposed uh, Z06019, 7.4 acres. Um, I'll, I'll shorten this up, but uh, at the time this was zoned, there was nothing around it that was similar, just like ours. It has nothing around it in the literal sense, right around it, that was the same. And Mitchell Park was zoned uh, for significantly more lots than was there uh, at the time it was requested. And in addition, the lot sizes uh, at the street, the width, was significantly reduced. The average lot width in our neighborhood is 70 to 80 feet. These went to like 50 and 55 foot wide lots, which made them stand out from the rest of the neighborhood uh, in, a, in a large aspect. Um, here's the uh, Mitchell's Park apartments that were approved and never built. And show you the, the, the distance, 100 feet, less than 100 feet from our property here. That's the view from the back of the lot. Here's the Medlin Place, also rezoned with more lots uh, than what was immediately around it. You can see that that is just, uh, just down the road from us. That's what was built. These are 50, 55 foot wide lots. Here's the very recent one. Uh, you all recently approved uh, rezoning of what was currently, or at the time was two single re residential lots and you approved uh, making that into four, and the lot widths are about 40 to 45 feet wide, which makes them significantly different than anything that was around them, and that's just 1,000 feet away from us, and that's, that's what they look like today. I think the first house just started. 
Mr. Pellegrino's residence is just 80 feet away and was done back in the 50s and uh, is essentially just within a couple of hundred square feet of what we're requesting. Took place in uh, the Ford, Ford residence. Now, this is the one that I believe is the most similar. This took place 2006 and 2007. Was a double fronted lot like ours is with McClendon and Medlin. Their house at that lot was facing Medlin instead of McClendon, and they split it and put a new house on uh, on McClendon. And you can see where that is in relation to ours. And you can see that the plan is very similar. And that's the house they built. Also, again, very similar to what we're requesting. The staff issues were the density is too high, requires a change to medium density, not contiguous to any medium density, situated in the middle of a single family neighborhood, spot zoning would lead to other requests, would lead to the development is significantly different to immediate lots and a high number of variances. So just briefly, I want to talk about the density. Um, the density uh, that the staff used was kind of their standard. Uh, they look at the entire subdivision. When they, when they come up with the density, they look at the amount of area that's included in uh, the detention and the roads and everything, and they come up with an overall density for the site. So when you compare us in that way, we don't have on our development uh, a detention pond or new roads. We just have a lot. And of course, what happens is we end up being at the, at the high end of the scale when you look at density, 5.5 units per acre. And when you compare us to the other recent developments, as staff showed, we're going to be high when you look at it that way. But that's really deceiving. People don't see density. They see lot size. Uh, they don't know about averages of the overall site development. They're simply looking at the size of the lot and relative to the lots adjacent to it. So if you go back and you just compare lot size, and you, you take the smaller lot size from any of those developments, those same developments that staff to use, going back here you'll notice it's the same developments, but they're reordered. But you'll see there that by lot size in that middle column in yellow, uh, we're squarely in the middle of what the city has approved in lot sizes. There are lots uh, that have been approved down to 5,460 square feet, uh, 6,000 and 7,000, all well below what we have as our smallest lot. The other thing we look at, again, is lot width. People, your homeowners, your neighbors, they don't care about density. It doesn't mean anything to the average homeowner. What they care about is when they're driving down the street from one house to the next, does one stand out from the others and look, make theirs look wrong? Well, if you're driving down the road and you, have, you go from 80-foot lots to 45-foot lots, that's a huge difference. It's half. We're not changing that. We're going from 80 to 80 or 75 to 80. And so if you look at this and you compare our lot widths to the other lot widths of all those developments, guess where we are? We're at the very top end, the best place to be. We're staying in congruent with all of our neighbors. We're not changing. The only thing we're changing is the depth, which most neighbors aren't really going to perceive. Only the buyer would perceive that, and they know it going into it. So finally, when you compare density just based on lot size alone, you see that we're right smack in the middle with what you guys have previously approved. Not contiguous to medium density was the other issue. Um, matter of fact, we are not. When you look at the lots immediately surrounding us, we are not. I can't change that fact. But I do want to remind you, I own the lot next door. And then right next to that lot are much higher densities. You see in red here uh, the densities that do not conform with R15. They are either high-rise residential or RAD. All these densities are surround us. Third issue is situated in the middle of a single-family neighborhood. That's, I would say, a little bit debatable. Again, our neighborhood is changing every day. Uh, we're we're going to be one of the areas. We're right downtown. We've got people buying up the corners and edges of our subdivision already and changing it. As we know, you guys have approved many of those developments. So I think what we're looking about is situated in the middle of a changing neighborhood. The zoning would lead to other requests. The reality is other similar zoning requests in this very neighborhood without contiguous matching zoning came before today. The Ford residents, Medlin Place and Medlin Park have set the tone for redevelopment in this neighborhood with similar or even smaller lots. The fifth issue, uh, this would lead to a development that's significantly different to adjacent lots. The reality, the house on McClendon, the one that we would leave as existing uh, with a minor addition would be completely congruent in size and scale to the adjacent homes on McClendon which have done similar additions over the years. And the new home that was proposed on Medlin would have vacant backyards on either side of it. So it's not really incongruent with what's adjacent to it. 
um, five variants is required. The rationale, uh, the setbacks we are requesting are almost identical to those approved uh, on the precedent setting developments, including the Ford residence, Medlin Park, and Medlin Place. And then also I just add that we would not need some of these variances if it were not for the easement we are freely granting to the city for the utility which currently bisects our property for which the city currently has no recorded easement. Um, some of you know this story, but when we bought the property and met with staff, it was I don't believe it was uh, in the records, um, but we basically, during our due diligence, determined that there was a sewer line, uh, two sewer lines, a, sep a septic sewer and a storm sewer that very unusually crossed our property at an angle. We already had plans drawn up that we had to change, and it, it really uh, was a big problem for us. And uh, without those, we wouldn't have had to ask for some of these setback variances um, because we could have built where the pipe is. But because the pipe is there, we have to go to the other side of the house where we don't have as much room between the side setbacks, so we had to request some setback variances for that. Finally, um, I want to tell you the little story about how we ended up becoming to own this house. Those of you who know me know I'm not a developer by trade. Uh, I'm a planner and a landscape architect, and I live in this neighborhood. I live about six houses down the road from this neighborhood, and I'm, I totally redid my house in 2007. I uh, engaged the community and started a neighborhood group. Um, I've been an active player in trying to change Smyrna Heights. This property is the rotten apple. It is the worst house on the street. It is the worst house on the block. It's been a rental for 20-some years. Um, the way that we came to own it was was driving by one day, and the gentleman was standing out front with some other people, and I pulled up, and I said, you know, what's going on? I own this house next door. Uh, I've called a lot on this property. Are you going to do anything about this? And they basically told me that they had just evicted the tenant, and they were cleaning it up and going to put it back on the rental pool. And I said, well, that's not good. You know, if you ever want to sell it, let me know. So... A month went by later, and I get a phone call from this gentleman who proceeds to tell me that in going in and trying to fix it, they realized it was beyond repair in their budget. They thought they could fix it for a few thousand dollars and flip it, um, but they realized it was going to cost too much. And he said, you know, would you be interested in buying this or know somebody who would? And at the time, I didn't, I'll be frank, I didn't have the money, but I knew I wanted to make this happen because it was too important in my neighborhood. So uh, long story short is I found partners uh, to come in with me so that we could purchase this property and try to make a change in our neighborhood. So I think that's very important for you to understand. Those of you who know me know I would never build anything that didn't look good and wasn't something that the neighborhood could get behind. Um, some of the pictures that you guys saw in the rendering, I'll be frank, uh, we used kind of some uh, juvenile software to generate them. The, the truth is they're going to look a lot better than this. If you've been to see my house, uh, it's going it's to look a lot better than what you see in these pictures. Um, and I'll add to you before I finish that we have our home builder here who may be interested in building the house on the back. If you have any questions about what he would build, I'd be happy to answer them. And with that, I yield. Any questions? Sean, I, I got uh, uh, just a couple of questions. I had uh, a phone call uh, regarding, I think there's a wall on the western edge uh, of the property that uh, that part of it is, is falling and so forth. Is that wall on, on your property? And the question is, is it going to be repaired? Are you going to repair it? Or what's the, what's the status of that? The wall is not on our property. It is on the property to the east. However, um, we consider that pretty important to our success. And I will be endeavoring to contact the owner and, and ask if we can remove it for him. Any questions? Ms. Uh, Wilkinson. Um, so you would remove it? Would you ha replace it or just remove it? I'm just curious. Um, I'm not certain at this time. I don't think we'd replace it right now. If you, you, I think, believe you saw it today. Uh, it's a center block wall that's been busted to a million pieces and fallen over. It's only knee high. And this, there's a kind of a gentle slope there already that's a maintainable slope. It's, it's already basically because it's fallen over, they've already been mowing and maintaining it as is. And it's not, again, on my property. So... I think we can guarantee that we're going to go in and remove it and dress up the slope and reseed the slope, but that would probably be the extent of what we would do. Anything you'd like to say? I just, I think Sean's covered it all, so. No, thank you. I've got a cold, so I'll let him take over. I will add that uh, Martha and her husband and my partners are also Smyrna residents and have been for a long time. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, anyone that was sworn in that would like to make any comment, I know the to the big guy to I have a Frank, Frank, the big guy. Uh, any comment you'd like to make? Tell us who you are and where you live at, Frank, and go from there. 
Thank you very much, you know, Mayor and Council. My name is Frank Polagrudo. Live at 1060 Medlin Street. Um, been in the neighborhood for about 10 years. And you know, first of all, I want to see this uh, project move forward. There's a lot of transition. There's a lot of things you guys approved, and you guys are doing a great job. I love what you're doing on Concord Road. Love what you're doing with the new school. Love what you guys did with the Market Village. And this is just like another step in the right direction in our neighborhood. And like I said, I'd love for you to buy Mitchell Park and tear that apartment complex down. That'll be another uh, another discussion. But I really think, you know, Sean has done a great job in his own home and taking a smaller house and renovating it just like I have. And I think we got a good team and a good, you know, good group of people here that want to do right by Smyrna and enhance what it looks like and keep our community growing and going in the right direction. You know, I own a small construction company called Dex and Moore, and uh, you know, and as a, as a professional, you know, builder and remodeler, and uh, I've seen some of the work that Sean's done. It's it's very impeccable. So I'm um, got all the confidence in the world he can do a great job. Yep. All right. Yeah, thank you very thank much. You. Anyone else? My name is Chuck Whiteside. I live at 921 McClendon Avenue, about a block and a half from the subject property. Uh, what he said. <laughs> uh, you know, the reality is I've remodeled a house and, and chose Smyrna Heights for my home because I anticipated the redevelopment of that area because I saw what you guys were approving all around the area. And I've done several improvements to my home that didn't require any, you know, modifications or setback uh, or variances. And... Uh, you know, I'm also very supportive of what Sean's trying to do. I mean, we're, we're all trying to improve the neighborhood. Despite all your best efforts to revitalize this whole area in, around Smyrna Heights, the fact remains we've got 50% rental property. You know, that's not going to change unless you make changes right here today. And, and I know it's a precedence. And, you know, so what if it spawns other requests? I mean, that's what we're here for, right? Um, so if we're going to make a change, it's got to start somewhere. Good. Thank you. Thank you very much. If you just ditto the ditto, we'll be good. <laughs> no, no, I'm, my name is Terry Wilson. I'm the owner of Leland Homes, so I'm pretty sure you got some questions for me. Yeah. Um, I've built over at Riley's Walk. Mm. I've built out a uh, Morris Circle. I just finished and closed a house down by Campbell High School. Uh, back on November 15th. I'm building one over off of uh, Brown Circle right now. So I've got various lots around the city. Uh, pretty sure you know the previous owner, Mark Gibbs, that did Concord Lakes Village. So now I'm, I'm the owner now. He's moved on. But I think we can add value to the neighborhood. I did Medlin Place, too. I built five homes over there. So I know the area very well. So I think I can come in a nice quality product at an affordable price and bring in a better tax tax base so does any y'all have any questions? I, I wish you had three or four more requests tonight uh, because I, I know what Sean does and I've he does quality and he's not going anywhere he's, he's here and right. um, if he would have talked much longer though he would have lost some votes probably up here but, uh, <laughs> but uh, well I'll sit back down yeah good deal thank you thank you very much but I have a question for you sir Got a question? Yes. Um, just out of curiosity, why wouldn't you tear down the existing house, build two new houses, sell them both to owners, and reduce the rental occupancy in the neighborhood? Well, Sean actually owns owners? the other home. So that would be more of a Sean question. It's That's really financial. Um, we, we bought the house in front, and financially it doesn't make sense to tear it down uh, for what we can do there. Um, it will be an owner. We're, we're adding 500 plus square feet to it, and we're going to make it look like my house. It won't be a renter. It would have to rent for too much. It'll be over $200,000 when we're done. I promise you. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else that was sworn in like to make any comment? You don't have to. Okay. Corky? Mr. Mayor, I'd like to ask our council a question. Scott, do we need to reverse B and C? Uh, no. One is a, a no, are you density talking about question. The, no. Doesn't matter? No, it doesn't matter. Now, you you um, should do the, the um, rezoning request.
Okay. And if that, depending on if that passes, then you go on to the other. If it doesn't okay. pass, then the other one's irrelevant. Okay. Mr. Mayor, with that, um, I'd like to make a motion to approve zoning request Z. 13-019 rezoning of to from R15 to RAD conditional for the development of two single family homes uh, at point zero, 0 0.365 acre tract landlot 451 uh, 1041 McClendon Avenue the McClendon Group LLC second motion is second any discussion all those in favor of the motion please vote Waiting on one. Somebody not vote to the left. Is it not working? Okay. That's approved four to three. So that's that's approved. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, item C is um item c is a public hearing that's 2014-13 uh land use change request moderate density residential to medium density residential landlot 451 1041 mclendon avenue mclendon group this is the previous rezone uh, i'll just um there's really not we don't need background um I would just ask you, this is a public hearing. Is anyone here like, like to make any public comment concerning this issue? Got the record show there is no Mr. Welch. Hearing no comment, Mr. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion to approve land use change request moderate density residential to medium density residential land lot 451 at 1041 McClendon Avenue, the McClendon Group. I'd like to make that in the form of a motion. I have a motion. I will second it, but the screen is uh, needing to be reloaded. We've got the wrong item. Excuse me. Okay. 2014-013. Houston, we have a problem. I withdrew my motion. Well, no, you don't need to withdraw it. Well, I had to withdraw it from that Oh, from item. there? She's, she's trying to fix it right now. Okay. I guess we have to wait until... Right, we've got a motion second to approve this land use. Okay. All those in favor of the motion, please vote. That's approved four to three. Is that correct? And that's, I'm just going to say, Mr. Lenica, Ms. Wilkinson, and Ms. Bluestein opposed uh, Pritchett, another which Welch and Fennel in the positive. Okay. Item D is approval of ordinance 2014-01 annexation 100% owners requesting annexation land lots 543 and 542 17th district 1.53 acres uh, parcel 2 and 2.26 acres of parcel 6 and 7 as being known as 1514 Pebble Brook Road 10 I'm sorry 1401 and 1445 Pebble Brook Road Second section, Cobb County, Georgia. Mr. Uh, Taylor, the background, please. Uh, Mr. Mayor, the applicant is actually Whitfield Academy, um, and they are seeking to annex 
one and a half, about a one and a half acre tract um, that's adjacent to their um, to their school over there. Uh, the current use is residential. They uh, future use is they want to actually incorporate it into their campus and uh, uh, make it part of the school there. Um, the total acres to be annexed will be 5.29 acres. We have received no objections from the county, um, and so staff does recommend approval uh, with an effective date uh, February 1st, 2014. Since this is 100% owned, we, this is not a public hearing. Is that correct, Mr. Cochran? Mr. Ron Fennell represents that, who will represent that district. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I'm proud to say that Woodfield Academy uh, has been in Smyrna for a number of years. Uh, over the years, they continue to look at opportunities uh, uh, adjacent to their campus to fulfill their ongoing mission. Uh, to that end, they have acquired some additional property, and uh, it's time just to include that footprint of the entirety of Whitfield Academy. Uh, they're represented here today uh, by their uh, Director of Advancement, Mr. Tom Wood, and would like to give him an opportunity in the public hearing phase to at least say a few words about their experience with Smyrna. I wouldn't go into it. We may not take you if you get too long. Would you? <laughs> no, I just want. Um, we are uh, just trying to clean house as we put together our master plan, and the master plan actually was released to the public uh, just last week. It's on our website if anybody wants to check that out. And uh, we're doing great things at Whitfield, as you know, and uh, have an open house coming up on Saturday, two thirty. Anybody wants to check it out? But um, yeah, it's just we're just trying to clean this all up, be part of Smyrna. So good deal. Any questions? They are, uh, they're good citizens, and uh, I'm proud to say Tom Wood and his family are residents of Ward 7 as well in the Oak Hills community. Thank Mr. You. Mayor, I move approval of the annexation of this 5.29 acres, uh, that being uh, two. You know, do we need to close the public hearing first? No, it's not, it's not one. All right. It becomes uh, a part two zero, of Ward 7. 2014 0, 0. 12, that's uh, ordinance uh, annexation request, 100% uh, owners, lots, land lots 543, 542, 17th district, uh, 1.53 acres, and parcel 2 is 2.26 acres, parcel 6 and 7 being known as 1514 Pebble, Pebble Brook, 1401 and 1445 Pebble Brook in the second section. That's a total of 5.2 acres, 2.9 acres. I move approval. Yeah, come, come part of Ward 7. Okay. Uh, to, to become effective February 1st, this annexation would uh, be into Ward 7, City of Smyrna. Motion by um, Mr. Fennel, second by Ms. Anulowicz. Any discussion? All those in favor of the motion, please vote. Wait, no one. So, okay, that's, that's approved 7 0. Finally got that one here. Item 5 is privileged licenses. We have none. Item 6 is formal business. A is C O N 2014 0 1, I guess. Approval to enter into a contract with Market Street Services, Inc. for visioning initiative in the amount of $130,000 with a $10,000 contingency for a total budget request of $140,000. Authorize the mayor to execute all related documents. Mr. Taylor, the background, please. Mr. Mayor, at a uh, staff and uh, mayor and council retreat uh, nearly a year ago, um, staff presented um, the need to engage in an initiative to formulate some sort of a long-term strategy uh, for the city of Smyrna, um, and that it needed to be uh, done in cons consultation with a professional uh, planning organization so that uh, the public can assist the city in identifying uh, various opportunities, challenges, and issues that are going to be faced, uh, facing the city um, over the next uh, 20 years or so. Uh, since that time, uh, staff has been working with uh, the Vision Committee, and uh, seven, we uh, uh, sent out an RFP uh, in which seven firms submitted their qualifications. 
three firms were shortlisted and invited to make verbal presentations to the visioning committee. Um, they were then uh, invited to submit a price for services and two firms submitted. So uh, based on the uh, information that has been uh, provided to the vision committee um, and also to the city council, uh, staff would like to recommend uh, entering into a contract with Market Street Services uh, for a price of uh, $130,000 plus a $10,000 contingency. This is in Ms. Melanie Fritch's uh, committee. Mr. Sedgwick has a small PowerPoint presentation to make. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, a lot of the information has been covered by Mr. Taylor, but this is a vision for the community. Um, basically, in simple language, um, the purpose of this is to help answering and guide the question, what does Smarter's future look like? I mean, that's what this is all about, to, to, to put it in a nutshell. Um, again, Eric has already uh, talked about uh, Mayor and Council authorizing staff. Uh, you officially did it when you adopted your FY14 budget. Um, so therefore, what's under consideration tonight is that final recommendation um, that was headed by the uh, Vision Committee. Uh, as stated, seven f firms initially submitted, three were uh, asked to submit uh, true RFPs. We, we originally went out for RFQs uh, for qualifications, and then we went into the proposal step. Two of the, two of the three of those firms uh, actually submitted. The goal of, of, of the process is indeed to, ha uh, is to hire a planning slash consulting firm to assist the city in developing and implementing uh, a vision. The vision will be a 10-year or so plan that is concise, outcome-oriented, and inclusive. And it is uh, not designed nor intended to be viewed as any kind of land use plan or comprehensive plan. The process is to be one that is to be citizen-driven from the bottom up. The proposed approach consists of a minimum of three major elements community assessment, uh, basically understanding um, what the community is, what, it, uh, what it's made of, then the actual development of the vision itself uh, through uh, normal um, public hearings and other techniques, and then development of implementation strategies. That community involvement to help um, with all of the, the visioning here will be requested through a variety of means. So the recommendation, as is, is already stated, um, is that um, uh, Mr. Taylor, as the city administrator, and myself as the community development director, along with the vision committee, all agreed that uh, Market Street not only was the lowest cost proposal that we had, but we also felt it was the best uh, in that. The time frame for completing such an assignment is uh, approximately nine months. And so with that, I'll turn it back over to you. Okay. Thank you very much. I really appreciate that. Um, I'd just like to give you some background, a little bit more information than what Ken and Eric shared with you. <clears throat> um, in January, of, was the fourth day of January 2012, the mayor appointed myself, Terry, and Ron Fennell as the vision committee for the city. And as Eric stated at the retreat, we talked about we needed to get a professional group to help us with this, because only a couple of us had ever gone through a visioning committee or even really knew what it was. We knew about land use plans and LCIs and that sort of thing. But we, um, with the committee, and Eric was a part of it, our city administrator, Ken and his department, Ken and Tom Bolin, and then Jennifer Bennett from Community Relations. So we had several, uh, I think about five different meetings uh, to meet with different people to talk about all the different things that is encompassed with it. And as Ken said, it's a nine month process. Um, this company that we chose, Market Street, uh, started their business in 1997, um, currently working with seven other cities and states. Uh, also, we checked six of their references of places they had worked. All the references were compl very complimentary um, and said they would hire them again. Um, 
So I just want to go over a couple of things that's going to be involved in it. This is a grassroots project. By grassroots, I mean we're starting with our citizens. We really want to know what our citizens would like to see in Smyrna. So this is an opportunity for your council to connect with all of our citizens, all 50 plus thousand of you, to really get some ideas from you. We want to listen. We want to know what's going on. But our, this company, Market Street, will be the one that will be guiding the directions and telling us how we need to do things. We're going to need 25 people that are going to make up a steering committee. That steering committee will be given instructions on how to um, have different surveys that we'll be doing. We're going to be using the Granicus website, Granicus software that we have. We're going to be using No Smyrna, which is another website that we have, in ways that you can communicate. There'll be surveys that will be done. There'll be letters that will be mailed out. There may be some phone calls that are made so that we get a good group and a good sampling of what people really want out of our 50 plus thousand citizens. So we feel very confident with Market Street that they'll be able to guide us and direct us in what we can do. So this is going to be a whole new process, but it is an opportunity for council to connect and let our citizens know that we do care about what you think and what you would like to see, and that's why we're doing this project. And um, with that, I'll ask Ms. Nolowitz and Mr. Fennell if they have anything they'd like to say. Ms. Nolowitz. I do. You know, the, the goal of the vision, is, the vision process, is to solidify, you know, our knowledge of where we are, figure out where it is we want to go, and then the, how are we going to get there. And I think that the point to emphasize is that this is going to be citizen-driven. It, it has to be citizen-driven. And to that end, I'm looking forward to Market Street really helping us engage citizens in ways that we haven't before. I think that's one of the things that I'm most excited about with this process. And I look forward to beginning. Mr. Fennell. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And I want to thank the Mayor Pro Tem for her leadership on the visioning committee as we sought out the best solution for us to tackle the mission the Mayor assigned us and that is to help express for the next 10 years what we see to be the vision of our community through an engagement of our citizens. This process and with the help of, of a, a very fine firm, uh, we uh, look forward to the year ahead as it helps us to understand how we can best prioritize our investment, that's our financial investment, but more importantly our strategic uh, planning uh, strengths as a city will be uh, borne out and our weaknesses so we can learn from all of those at the same time and uh, devise what we hope to be from a citizen input standpoint uh, a planning process that results in a, a vision for the future of Smyrna that we as a community can all support and work toward. That's our mission. And with that, Mr. Mayor, I second the Mayor Pro Tem's motion. Did you make a motion? Not yet. Okay. <laughs> If you want to make a motion, then we'll take comment. Yeah. At this time, Mr. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion. <coughs> excuse me. That CON 2014-0 um, approval to enter into a contract with Market Street Services Inc. for visioning initiative in the amount of 130,000, with a $10,000 contingency for a total request of 140,000, and authorize the mayor to exec execute all related documents. That's my motion. I have a motion and a second by Mr. Fennell. Is there any other discussion? All those in favor of the motion, please vote. Now, what? That's approved four to three. Um, Ms. Bluestein, Ms. Wilkerson, Mr. Lenica oppose it, and Ms. Pritchard, Wilkerson, I'm sorry, another witch, Welch, and Fennel. Okay. Um, item B under formal business, 2014-015, uh, <clears throat> approval of Ward 5 reappointment to the Planning and Zoning Board, Ed Whittington. Terms expires 12-31-2015. Is that right? Term to expire 25. Okay. Ms. Wilkinson. 
Um, yes, um, I'd like to make a motion to approve uh, Ed Whittington on the Planning and Zoning Board. We have a motion by Ms. Wilkinson. Second by Mr. Lunker. Any discussion? All those in favor of the motion, please vote. That's approved 7 0. Item C is approval of resolution 2014 02, declaring that neither Branch Capital Partners, LP, nor TNC Land have authority to maintain an action on behalf of the city and have no authority to prosecute claims involving city owned property. Mr. Taylor, the background. Uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, Branch Properties and TNC Land Holdings, or TNC Land LLC, have filed a complaint and a de novo appeal in the um, Superior Court of Cobb County against the city and its elected officials, uh, alleging various improper actions uh, related to the denial of zoning requests and making various claims with respect to properties sought to be rezoned. Um, some of this property, uh, two parcels, are owned by the city. Uh, this resolution clarifies that uh, neither Branch nor TNC has authority to act on behalf of the city regarding the city-owned property. Recommend approval. Uh, this is Ms. Bluestein. Ms. Cocker, anything you want to add to that? Okay. Ms. Bluestein. Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor. Uh, at this time, does anyone have any questions? Or no? Okay. At this time, I would like to make a motion to approve Resolution 2014. 2014-02 declaring that he, neither Branch Capital Partners, LP, nor TNC Land have authority to maintain an action on behalf of the city and have no authority to prosecute claims involving city-owned property. Second. I have a motion to second. Any further discussion? All those in favor of the motion, please vote. It's approved 7-0. Item D, under formal business approval of modification to define benefit plan regarding vesting for salary, pay grades 24 and higher. Mr. Taylor, the background, please. Mr. Mayor, back in 2010, um, the City Council approved a, uh, a new retirement plan that, among other things, changed the uh, vesting period for all employees from seven years to 10 years. Um, since that time, uh, we've come to realize that the 10-year vesting period uh, creates an issue for the city when, when trying to recruit senior management staff, um, which are typically in grades 24 and higher. Um, and so what we're putting forward tonight is a recommendation to uh, reduce the vesting period for grades 24 and higher from 10 years to 5 years, and we do recommend approval. Uh, this is in, under Mr. Wade Lenica, HR, Human Resources. Mr. Lenica. Thank you, Your Honor. As chair of the HR committee, I move approval of item 2014-016 as explained. Motion is second. Any discussion? All those in favor of the motion, please vote. That's approved 5-2 to two with Ms. Bluestein and Ms. Wilkerson opposing. Um, Seven is commercial building permits. We actually have two. Uh, Mr. Taylor, you want to take care of both those? Sure. The we'll uh, first one is the issuance of a commercial, board, commercial, commercial building permit at 4300 East West Connector for the construction of, of a new Del Taco. Um, the new building will be 2,720 square feet with an estimated cost of construction of $550,000. General contract for the development is Diversified Commercial Builders Incorporated. Uh, the other item, let me see if I can pull it up here, uh, is for an O'Reilly O'Reilly's auto, auto parts store at 3425 South Cobb Drive. Uh, this, some folks may have noticed that this is already under construction. It's located uh, to the left of, of the Captain D's. Um, this uh, auto parts store will will be uh, 7,704 square feet with an estimated cost of construction of $719,016. And CBIGC is listed as a general contractor on the project. Uh, we recommend approval of both items. Item 7A is in Mr. Wade Lenica's uh, ward. Mr. Lenica, if you'll. Thank you, Your Honor. These are really mostly a formality, but I move approval of item 2014-001, the issuance of a commercial building permit as explained. Okay, we have a motion. I'll second it. And a second. 
Any discussion? Who would have thunk it cost half a million dollars to build a taco place? It's amazing. Uh, all those in favor of the motion. It's proof 7-0. Mr. Welch is uh, the fr proud father of the O'Reilly's Auto Parts. That's seven, almost $800,000. <laughs> That's true. Who would have thunk that? Mr. Mayor, uh, for clarification purposes, um, I, I had a phone call last week from a gentleman questioning uh, the, the rezoning uh, of this property. We, we did not have a rezoning uh, per se. We, we did have a, a zoning variance or two on the property, but all the property uh, where this O'Reilly is, is located was already commercial property. Um, so if he's listening out here tonight, that, that the property where this, this property is is already uh, it was already commercial. Uh, with that, Mr. Mayor, I'd like a motion, make a motion to approve the issuance of a commercial building permit for an O'Reilly's Auto Parts store at 3425 South Cobb Drive. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve this building permit. Any discussion? All those in favor of the motion, please vote. That's approved 7 0. Uh, item 8 is consent agenda. Mr. Taylor, will you please read the consent agenda for council's approval? Item A on the consent agenda is the approval of the January 6, 2014 Mayor and Council meeting minutes. Item B is an approval of the Village to Village 11K road race to be held Saturday, November 15, 2014. Item C is an approval of the uh, 12th Annual Atkins Park Crawfish Boil to be held April 26, 27, 2014. And item D is an approval of the 2004 St. Patrick's Day celebration in the Market Village. Um, which will occur on March 15th and 16th, 2014. We're here in motion. We approve the consent of Chen. So moved. Second. Motion second. Any discussion? All those in favor of the motion, please vote. We got one missing. That's approved 7 0. Item 9 is committee reports. We'll start tonight with, um, let's go to my right. We'll start tonight with Mr. Ron Finlan. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd like to ask uh, the uh, police chief to come forward and give a report from the police department. And while he's doing that, I want to thank the Bennett Woods Garden Club for allowing me to uh, uh, appear before them uh, last week. Uh, both uh, police chief and fire chief were there. Uh, citizens uh, were able to ask questions, and I appreciate both of the chief's indulgence in allowing us to do that and shared the uh, time with uh, Councilman Welch. Chief Lee. Thank you. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, currently, we have three police officer positions open, although we are going through the applications right now. We have one detention officer and also one communication officer that, in open positions, but we're pretty close to filling those last two. We do have six police officers in the uh, basic police academy class, and they're scheduled to graduate mid-March, so we're real excited about that. Our second Citizens Police Academy starts next month on February 12th. Uh, the class has already been selected, so uh, we're not taking any more applications on that. We're hoping to add a third position to our DUI task force within the next 30 to 45 days. Uh, we're reviewing the manpower situation to make sure that, uh, that we can do that. A as you know, the uh, two officers who have been doing it, uh, <laughs> they've been doing a bang-up job. Um, what program we're working on, we're pretty, you know, we're getting pretty close, and I wanted to kind of let you all in on it is we're looking at putting together a reserve officer program and uh, basically what we would be looking at is for like some retired uh, Smyrna police officers and a few others who have retired or uh, left in good standing uh, from other law enforcement agencies and with it they would be required to give us free services and do uh, what we're looking at is approximately 16 hours a month worth of free services. So, like I said, we still got a lot of I's to dot and T's to cross, but we're pretty excited about uh, hopefully being able to put something together to present to y'all. Um, one thing I wanted to pass on, uh, one crime prevention tip, uh, 
when the weather gets cold like this, a lot of times you see people, they'll start their cars up, leave it running, hoping it to get warm, or they'll run inside a business so that their car doesn't get cold. Well, we recently, the day before yesterday, we had somebody do that, and their car got stolen. <laughs> and the, I, I, I'm going to brag on this officer, too. Um, it seems I've been doing a lot here bragging on this particular officer but she took the stolen vehicle report yesterday and she looked and looked yesterday couldn't find it this morning she did her zone patrols and she located the car and she sat on it for about an hour and a half unfortunately nobody came out so we were she was able to get the uh, owner of the vehicle to come get it now she's a rookie officer was it still running <laughs> no, sir. <laughs> she's a rookie officer, and uh, she's one I bragged on not that long ago for catching armed robbery suspects. Just last week, she caught a burglary suspect. In fact, uh, it, it, there was two burglars involved with it. One of them knocked on the door of uh, one of Terry's neighbors, as a matter of fact. Yes. And... Uh, you know, a lookout was given on the suspect, and uh, she saw the car, uh, made a traffic stop, and, of course, the two suspects inside did what we call a bush bond. They both ran. Uh, they gave chase, and um, they didn't locate him at first, and then when she went back to the suspect's car, the suspect had gotten back in the car, hoping to get out of there, and she was able to... Um, yes, she was able to make an arrest on that, and then we were actually able to identify the second suspect and to get warrants out for, for him. But uh, like I said, I, had, I, I love to do bragging. In fact, uh, one of her fellow officers today, in fact, I made a traffic stop today. I thought I was behind a drunk driver. It turned out he was putting a sweatshirt on. But... Uh, <laughs> Uh, her and one other officer pulled up behind to, to back me up. And the one officer came up to me and says, Chief, he says, I bet you're getting tired of giving accolades on her. <laughs> and I said, I'll tell you this, I never tire of giving <laughs> accolades on any of our officers. But uh, with that, I'm open for any questions. I don't have a question, but I would like to thank you very much for the reports that you give us on a weekly basis. It really is instrumental, and it helps us communicate with our constituents and everything. And I just want to tell you, I think you've done a wonderful job with our police. Everybody I talk to is so seem to be happy and thrilled with what's going on and the changes that you've made. So I just want to commend you for doing a great job. Thank you so much. Thank you, Chief. Uh, we do get a lot of uh, favorable responses, and uh, we appreciate that. For those who may be interested in the next Smyrna Citizens Police Academy, your next iteration will be in the summertime, is that correct? Or fall? Probably, probably in the fall. Okay. Uh, and you only have a limited number of spots, so if anybody is interested in that, they should contact the police department? Well, we, yes, they can do that. But what we've been doing is having it go through uh, the Human Resource Department as well. Fair enough. But, uh, yes, because we, we're limited because of class size right. to 15 spaces. Very good. Right. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Chief Page Day, Smyrna Fire Department, fire rescue team has been busy since your arrival. Uh, looking forward to hearing your report tonight. Well, good evening, everybody. It's, I'm honored to be here before you, and I'm very excited to talk to you a little bit about what the fire department has been doing in my busy, this is my third week, so. <laughs> um, First of all, we do have four vacancies right now in the fire department. We have lost two firefighters and two lieutenants. We just closed our uh, request for applications, so we'll be reviewing those shortly. Secondly, we had a very busy week. If you all didn't recognize the frigid temperatures that were outside, which was actually the first week that I was here in um, the state of Georgia, so I had a whole variance of temperatures. During the week of January 5th, we had 116 calls. Now, these weren't limited just to uh, water breakage and, and 
and pipes bur bursting all over town. It was also the repercussions of pipes, pipes bursting. We had uh, room and contents fires. There was arcing and all sorts of interesting calls that made for a very busy week. So I'm very proud of all of our first responders. They did an outstanding job. This week, or just this past week, Thursday and Friday, we had a very busy strategic planning session. We wanted to plan out what we're doing for the next 36 months so we can have a roadmap for our future. Um, very excited about the active participation that was involved with 12 members. Uh, all uh, ranks were represented, and we also had an outside partner from the hospital, um, Bob Stowe. He's also involved in our EOC that we're partnering with a hospital. Great ideas came of it. We have 12 strategic imperatives that we're going to roadmap, create committees, and get things going for progressive forward movement and forward action. Very excited about that. We also created our mission, mission vision, and, and core values um, that we're going to post proudly. And every decision we make from this time forward, we're going to reflect on those and how it impacts. Um, the fire department and its involvement in the community. Uh, the third thing is I have our new patch, and I've brought enough for each and every one of you to have. This patch was voted on uh, prior to my arrival here, but it represents the fire department and what what we represent in the city of Smyrna and also in the state of Georgia, and also from a national aspect with the patriotism involved in, in what we do. So I'll have one of those for each and every one of you to have. You can get our city attorney. He's he's an hourly employee. But, <laughs> he can he can hand them out. Well, if he wants one, he can have one too. Kyle, you hand those out. Well, since uh, I thought I'd leave with the fire safety tip, it is cold outside, and please communicate to your neighbors, your friends, your constituents that with the heat, you want to make sure that your pro your propane, your natural gas that they're in good working condition because carbon monoxide easily builds with the more and more we run our heating elements in our house. So if you don't have a carbon monoxide alarm in your house, please consider going to Home Depot or Lowe's or your neighborhood hardware store and putting one in because that's a silent killer, folks, and we need to make sure that we want to keep you safe. So with that, I'll be happy to answer any questions. Are, are you getting familiar with Smyrna? You know, I am. Really? I am. Finding any good places to, to eat? My favorite place to eat? No, different, <laughs> different places. Different places, yeah, and I keep running into the mayor every time I go out to eat. So, so it's, you uh, wait till Krispy Kreme opens. Yeah, that's right. It'll be, it's going to be a... Well, that's where Chief Lee will be hanging out. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one. Yeah. Every now and then, you know. <laughs> I, want, I want to ask you a quick question if I can. I know that people are very tempted every year not to have their fireplace cleaned. Very true. Mm -hmm. You know, but do the creosote logs really do as good a job as a professional cleaning? You know, I'm I not, can't, I'm not I can't professional support, cleanings, you know, a, a product over a professional cleaning, but I do know that those logs do help. Do they? Yes. But if you have an older house with an older fireplace, my suggestion would be have a professional look at it. Because we do have chimney fires. That... Any other yeah. questions? Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Did everybody get their patch? Yes, thank you. All right, take care. Uh, as a uh, final uh, item, Mr. Mayor, uh, in addition to thanking all the public safety personnel who work on our behalf 24-7, 365, if you have a chance to bump into one of them, please thank them for what they do to protect us and to uh, protect our belongings and our businesses. Uh, I do want to uh, just note that upcoming I'm going to have a couple of uh, public meetings uh, and then a couple of neighborhood meetings. Uh, I'll announce those as we get a little closer and we have dates, but I'll be working with Woodland Walk community and then uh, along the North Cooper Lake area just to inform people about uh, some development plans that are ahead and uh, try to anticipate and answer some of the questions that they have. Uh, and then we'll have a town hall meeting in, uh, in February or March. So we're working on that. With that, I conclude my report, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Wayne Lenica. Thank you, Your Honor. Our HR Director, Kay Bullock, does have a report this evening. While she's coming up, I'll ask our city clerk if she has anything to report. No? Okay.
I just have one quick thing that I wanted to bring up. Um, we are excited once again to have received notification from the Atlanta Business Chronicle that the city of Smyrna has been selected as a finalist for Atlanta's healthiest employer. We do not know yet where we actually finished in the placements. We will find that out in, two, well, three weeks on February the 14th at uh, the Georgia Aquarium. But we are just really thrilled again to be able to be recognized for the wellness program that we have here at the city. I'm looking for wonderful things to happen this year for 2014 as well. Uh, we'll be meeting with the wellness coach, Kelly, shortly to start putting together our 2014 plan of action, all the different events and challenges that we're going to have this year. But I look forward to coming back uh, in the second meeting in February with giving you the um, outcome of where we finished this year. The competition has gotten tremendous since we were in it four years ago. We were at that time the only municipality or only government entity that was recognized out of 30 recipients that year. Since then, a lot of people have jumped on the wellness bandwagon. A lot of surrounding cities and counties have gotten on that. So I know there's going to be a lot of good competition. It's not just divided between public and private sector. We're out there with everybody. The, but I think we've got a, a really wonderful plan and program here in place, and I want to thank the council for their support every year for our wellness program. And we hope to come back with a really good announcement next next month. Any questions? Any thank questions? you very much. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, we have no report tonight from our city clerk or court services department. I do want to thank the residents of the Heritage of Bindings neighborhood for inviting me to their annual HOA meeting. Uh, likewise, uh, in a week and a half, I've got a meeting with Devonshire Court at their annual HOA meeting. And coming up in February, I know Forest Tills is going to have a meeting. Uh, hope to be there for at least part of that. I've got a conflict with part of that time. But it's great to always be in front of the residents and the citizens and hear what's on their mind and answer their questions and uh, just be able to interact with them one-on-one -on -one or in small groups. Uh, finally, just to, to note the holiday that we just had, uh, Martin Luther King's birthday. You know, it's a great time to reflect on uh, the virtues and qualities and character of the things that unite us as a people. I don't think there's any nation on the face of the earth that has a more diverse group of citizens than the United States. It's not because we all look alike or wear our hair the same way or do everything exactly the same, but there are ideas that unite us. There are values that unite us. There are, there are many positive things that unite us and make us a people, make us a nation, make us a community, which is the shining beacon to the world. Um, we still remain, despite of all, all of our problems and faults, the place that all across the globe people literally are, are dying trying to get here, uh, in some cases to escape oppression and to have a chance at a decent life for their families. Uh, so it's always good to reflect back on the blessings that we have. Uh, it's why Thanksgiving is always one of my favorite holidays. And, uh, and it's important that we note the one that just passed. And uh, we're lucky to be really next door to the home of Dr. King. And uh, we shouldn't take that proximity for granted. Uh, what he did was a blessing for all of us. With that, I yield. Ms. Susan Wilkinson. At this time, I would like to call um, Mary Moore uh, from the Smyrna Library to give us a report. Well, that was a perfect segue for me. Um, Smyrna Library and the Friends of Smyrna Library have several events planned in celebration of Black History Month, which is February 2014. The theme this year is civil rights in America uh, to commemorate the 50th anniversary of the passage of the Civil Rights Act. The keynote event is an appearance by Christine King Ferris. She is an educator and an author, as well as the sister of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. So we are extremely um, honored that she has chosen to participate in our programming. Uh, she will speak on Sunday, February 2nd at 3 p.m. as part of the Friends monthly first Sunday lecture series, which we normally have at the library, of course. But because we're expecting a larger than normal crowd, we're going to have it next door at the community center. 
Um, after Ms. Ferris speaks, there will be a question and answer period, followed by a reception with light refreshments. Um, some of the other events that we'll be having, art display, a movie, a storytelling program, and a genealogy workshop researching African-American ancestors. And um, so you can pick up a brochure about all of the events when you pop in the library, or you can visit our website for more details. And I brought some to pass out for everybody. <laughs> I was, thought that was for somebody else. <laughs> nope. It's for me. I made it for me. Uh, finally, I'd like to mention that today was Dino Day at the library, and we went on a hunt for dinosaur footprints. Uh, we danced like dinos. We read stories. We made fabulous headbands, such as these. So um, please take a look at Facebook, the Smyrna Library Kids Facebook page tomorrow for pictures of all the good fun we had today. Thank you. You can keep that on the rest of the meeting. You look good. Mary. Really matches everything. Mary. Mary. I, w I wanted to ask you something. I thought I had seen something about, let's see, a couple of things that I didn't hear you mention. Yes. Murder goes south. And, oh, my God. And the other one was the Downton Abbey thing. Oh, okay. I can talk about that, too. Um, okay, thank you. The, I don't know why I didn't mention Murder Goes South. The friends are going to kill me. Um, the Murder Goes South uh, Festival for Readers and Writers is this Saturday. It's the 11th annual program. The keynote speaker is Tamar Myers. She's the, um, the author of uh, dozens of mystery novels. She's written the Den of Iniquity series and the Pennsylvania Dutch series. Really fun lady. So even if you can just come for her lunchtime talk, you would really enjoy it. There are some tickets still available. Um, it's, uh, it's this coming Saturday at the Community Center. Uh, it's from 9.30 to 4.30. You can come into the library and register. It's $30, but that includes your lunch, door prizes. It's a really fantastic event. And then our Downton Day, that is Friday, uh, January 31st and we're having a tea we're going to show an episode of the new season and um, we're just going to uh, pamper people they can come and we're going to see serve tea and scones and we'll be the uh, the help and you, <laughs> you'll be the royalty so um, you can sign that's free of charge you can just sign up at the library okay thanks your dino headpiece could actually be a pretty good dowager countess headpiece <laughs> as well a dino dowager okay Sounds good. Thank you, Mary. Um, thank you, Mary. Um, and I, now I'd like to call um, Travis Landrum. Uh, he's here uh, in place of Steve Siaccio tonight. Um, Steve is out having knee surgery, so I w also want to wish, wish him a speedy recovery. Um, thank you, Travis. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Um, nothing necessarily to report from the department, uh, but I did want to give an update on Mr. Siaccio to let you know that he did have a successful surgery. Um, he went home last Wednesday from the doctor. He had a one to two night overnight stay at the hospital. Uh, so to my knowledge right now, everything went well, and um, he's on his road to recovery. And I uh, looks to return to us, and hopefully it'll be the same height and everything, but I won't be ashamed of that because then I'll be a little taller than he is, I think, but um, everything went well. Have you moved into his office yet? I hadn't got the green light on that yet, so. Go ahead. Every time I get a cold, somebody moves in mine, so. <laughs> All right. Um, but if you have any questions about anything, um, Mary definitely, she highlighted some of the things that are going on at the community center via the library and their program. So um, other than that, everything is going well in the department. Thank you, Travis. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Travis. I appreciate Thanks. it. And um, I just want to also let Ward 5 folks know that I'm in the process of planning a um, meeting coming up soon, and I will um, get the details to you um, soon when I figure out the exact date. Thanks so much. Mr. Corky Welch. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I see Ms. Ann Kirk out here. I'm going to call on first this evening. Thank you very much. Good evening, everybody. We had a very successful Martin Luther King Day of Service here in the city. It was the first event of its kind for the city of Smyrna. It came about because of requests from IBM volunteers who do this regularly, but they wanted to work within the city of Smyrna. 
So we've been planning this for several months, and we also had several Smyrna citizens who participated as well. It was very meaningful for me to see how much it meant to these people to be giving back to their community on that day. We worked at three schools and at the Smyrna Community Garden. So we got a lot of good work done, and uh, the weather was perfect for it. And I'm hoping that the weather will be just as good on Saturday. We are having our Adopt-A-Mile cleanup. It will be based out of Bronner Hall in the back. If you want to volunteer, just come to the back of Bronner Hall. We'll give you a hot cup of coffee and a donut or some kind of sweets and send you on your way with another group that will be out cleaning the roadways. Uh, look for all those folks out on Saturday morning. We'll be starting at 9 a.m. instead of 8 because of the cold weather. We always do this this time of year, and also it's a, the sunlight's a little bit better so you can see these volunteers and they can see the litter a little better. We are having a cla two classes, Tomatoes 101. This will be at the Smyrna Community Center on January the 23rd at 7 p.m. and January the 25th, which is Saturday morning at 10 a.m. And they will be in the jonquil room. And this was in response to all the horrible problems we had with tomato growing last year at the community garden. And we do have many, many plots available at the community garden. So if you're interested in the classes or getting a plot or both, please give my office a call. Renee Lemon, who is the coordinator of all the master gardeners in the entire county, will be doing the class. And she says it's going to be great fun. So, and finally, I would like to congratulate Virginia Davis on her 10th year of employment day. So we, we uh, got a very nice package from Human Resources, and she was very excited about that. So thank you very much. Thank you, Ann. Thank you, Ann. Um, I believe I see Rusty Martin out there. No report this evening. Um, thank you. Uh, with that, Mr. Mayor, I, you done? I conclude. Ms. Terry Nullowich. Thank you, sir. Neither finance nor community relations has a report tonight. I just want to reiterate that I'm very excited that we're beginning this vision process. I think that it is one of the most exciting things we're going to be engaging in as a community. And during during the next year, I am I look forward to getting information out. I think that people can watch the city's Facebook page. They can look forward to hearing information from their council members and to hearing more about the process at these meetings. And with that, I yield. Ms. Andrew Bluestein. Mr. Sudworth, do you have some something exciting to share with us? <laughs> Just in case you haven't seen enough of me tonight. <laughs> um, Year-end totals for 2013 over 2012 were up about 10% across the board when you average everything out. The, um, the building permits really took a substantial jump. I mean, that was one of the biggest uh, increases, uh, and correspondingly, if building permits are up, revenue is up, and it, so forth. So, I, again, what I've said basically for last year continues again. Uh, it's uh, great to drive around now and see some of the new housing and all that's going in. It, it's a good, it's a nice change. So, um I don't have anything else, um, Your Honor, so with that, I yield. Ms. Melanie Pritchett. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Once again, I'd like to thank Terry and Ron and Eric, uh, Ken and his staff, and Jennifer Bennett for all the work that y'all helped us do and um, put together for this uh, visioning committee. I'm really excited. I'm like, Terry, I can't wait to get the interaction with all of our constituents and um, people who want to be involved. You can contact um, any one of us sitting up here on the council and we'll be happy to give you more information we'll be uh, our group will be getting together with market street probably in the next two weeks to have a meeting with them to start moving forward and just thanks again for all the good work and with that i yield mr mayor uh, mr eric taylor anything mr scott cochran our city attorney of how many years Sixteen. Uh, hmm? nothing from the city clerk's office we have um, no show cause hearing, and no one has signed up for citizens' input. So I'm going to declare this meeting adjourned. It looks like about 9.13.